they that keep it, all they that keep God's laws, shall come to life. They're gonna do what? Come to life. They're gonna come to life. They're gonna start standing up on their feet. They're gonna say, I ain't African American no more, I ain't black no more. I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. I'm gonna keep God's laws. They're gonna come to life. They're gonna stop being the, the uh, valley of dry bones. They're gonna stop being the walking dead. They're gonna start being the gods on this earth they were meant to be. But yet, that's who our women laying up with. That's who, that's who they making their baby daddies. Because these men ain't making you no wives. They making you baby daddy number two. Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Guess what? We rejected God, he rejected us. How did he reject us? This right here. That's how he rejected us. By putting us in slavery. By putting another nation over us. Read. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. He says, seeing we forgot what? The law of thy God. We've forgotten the laws and commandments that he gave us for our wisdom. Now I said this happened. Let's prove it. That this right here is biblical prophecy. What? Give me verse uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Because remember, the curses does what? Identify who the children of Israel are. Because, you know, you can get somebody white, some Negro up here, who will defend the white man with all their heart and say, this happened to everybody. Well, let's see if this curse happened to everybody. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse, 60, and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. You remember what happened to us in Egypt? We was what, what were we doing in Egypt before Moses brought us out? Do you know? We were slaves. We was in Egypt for 400 years before Moses brought us out of uh, Egypt. The word Egypt means bondage. I'm going to prove that right quick. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of what? Bondage. Egypt means what? Bondage. Egypt means house of bondage. What's another word for bondage? If I was to put shackles on you and put you in, in shackles, what would that be called? Slavery. It would be called slavery. They were slaves in Egypt for 400 years. He said, I'm going to bring you back into Egypt or back into bondage or slavery. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. With ships. With what? Ships. Have you known any other people on this earth to go in slavery on ships? No. No. That's why God put that in the Bible. Because he knew your enemy would lie to you. He knew that our ministers, these false prophets, would sit there and try to act like this is book is meant for everyone. But God had to let you know that this Bible is only for one people. And that's you. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. We haven't seen our homeland Israel no more. As a nation of people, we still here in our captivity. Over 400 years later, we're still slaves right here. The same way we was in slavery in uh, Egypt for 400 years, guess what? We back here in slavery again 400 years because we rejected God. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. We be what? Sold unto your enemies. You see down here on the sign, on the auction blocks, we were being sold to our enemies. Read. For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. Slave women. Read. And no man shall buy you. He said nobody's going to be able to save you out that captivity. We already had people that tried to bring us out of captivity. Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. Are we still in slavery? Because why? We won't, we won't do what it takes to get out of it. Let me, let me ask you, I'm going to read something for you. Give me Psalms 94 and 16. I want you to hear what God is asking you. Because God is speaking to who? Us, right? 
Watch what God is saying to you. What's your name? Nancy. Your name was what again? Teddy? Jetty. Getty. Okay, Getty, Nancy, Brittany, Destiny. All right, all right, check this out. God is speaking to you right here. Now, Psalms 94 and 16. Psalms chapter 94 and verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? You hear what God is asking? He said, who's going to rise up for him against the evildoers? Because you know what the evildoers are still doing? They still got God's children in slavery. We're the children of God. Well, look around you. They got our children in slavery. They got our children being fed drugs. They got our daughters and our sons worshiping a false Christ. They still oppressing us, shooting us down in the streets. You understand? And he's asking, are you going to rise up for him? Read. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? He said, are you going to stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Those that commit sin? Are you going to stand up? You're going to learn this Bible? Teach your children? And come back and start serving you? Are you going to come off the sideline? You've been on the sideline for what? Six months now, right? He's asking you, are you going to come into the battle? Because he's calling men to the war. It's a war against you. The only people don't realize it's a war is us. We the only ones that don't realize what's going on. But they got a war against you. They destroying your children in television. They destroying they destroy your children in these school systems. They destroying your children in these churches. And God is saying, hey, y'all can stop this yourself by coming back and joining God in the fight, joining his people. He's raising up prophets to bring us out of this condition. It's time. It's time. Give me Baruch 4 and 1. It's time. We, it's time for us to wake up and come out of our sleep. We've been asleep way too long. We've been sitting there lying down while the enemy is just picking us off one by one by one. Each and every day. Praying that it don't happen to our children. And we see our children steady falling by the wayside. By the time they turn 14 and 15, you can't do nothing with them. Because why? The streets got them. They, they don't make laws where you can't even whoop their butt. Now they're in schools trying to teach your children it's okay to be homosexual. And we still sitting on the sideline trusting in the enemy. Putting our faith in white men. And we hadn't put our faith in the most high yet. We've been here 400 years in slavery. And all we do is sing songs. March up and down the street holding signs. We won't turn to the one thing that'll help us. Watch this. Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. How long does the law endure? Forever. That's his wisdom. That's his knowledge. That's your strength. That's going to be your salvation. It endures forever. Read. All they that keep it. All they that keep God's laws shall come to life. They're going to do what? Come to life. They're going to come to life. They're going to start standing up on their feet. They're going to say, I ain't African American no more. I ain't black no more. I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. I'm going to keep God's laws. They're going to come to life. They're going to stop being the, the uh, valley of dry bones. They're going to stop being the walking dead. They're going to start being the gods on this earth they were meant to be. We were meant to be gods. We were meant to rule this earth. We weren't meant to be slaves. Read. But such as leave it shall die. What's going to happen to the people that don't want to keep God's laws? Shall die. They going to die. There's nothing you can do about it. Because let me ask you one simple question. Y'all went to church, right? Did they, what is sin? When you do wrong. You know how many people are you selling dope right now and don't think they're doing wrong? They think they're feeding their family. We don't know what wrong is. Because why? Pastors didn't even teach you what sin was. They just told you you was a sinner. Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live 
on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. drunk the Kool-Aid. We drunk the Kool-Aid. Why wouldn't we just ask, well, damn, I don't want to be a sinner. Why wouldn't we just say that? If somebody sit there and said, you're a crackhead, are you going to be cool with that? Hey, what's the difference between saying you're a crackhead and you're a sinner? There ain't no difference. It ain't no difference. God hates both of them. You want to stay in sin? God hates you. Why would you sit there and tell people it's okay to be called a sinner when God hates sinners? He don't just hate the sin, he hates the sinner too. Because the sinner don't care about his children. The sinners is what's keeping us in slavery. The sinners are the ones that's causing us to get put to death. Think about that for a second. Here was what sin is, read. First John chapter three, verse four. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Whoever commits sin breaks the laws that he gave you to keep. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. That's what sin is. It's the breaking of God's laws. And your pastors never taught you God's laws. Now, check this out. If there's a payment for committing sin, do you know what it is? Romans 6 and 23. Now think about it. They told you you was a sinner, right? And they sit there and tell you, well, we all sin. No, we all don't sin. That's a lie. You can stop sinning easily. Do you realize that? You can stop sinning easily? Watch this. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. The payment for committing sin is death. Now, I told y'all earlier that since you wasn't taught laws, the laws and commandments, now, there are certain commandments that you break. If you're still breaking them, when Christ returns, I told you, you wouldn't get into the kingdom. Now, you don't want to be breaking that law, do you? Because, watch this. I'm going to show you first before I give you the commandment. I'm going to show you what love is. Give me John 14 and 15. Because you love Christ? Huh? You love Christ? Right. We all profess to love Christ, but guess what? Hey, you don't have men tell you they love you, right? And then they're gone. Did they, 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 they put a ring on it? Married, you still with you? Oh, I'll praise it. You still, how long you been married? I'll praise it. You think these young women be able to say that come growing up now? Nah, they ain't gonna be able to say that. I'll praise it that you are. Watch this. John chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said, if you love him, do what? Keep my commandments. He said, keep the commandments. It's very simple. He said, these are the laws and commandments I give you for worship me. He said, if you love me, keep the commandments and live. Stay in rulership of the earth. Raise your children. Raise your daughters. You know what I'm saying? Govern the whole earth with the laws and commandments. But he said, if you don't do it, the payment for not doing it was death, right? Here's a law that you wasn't taught. Deuteronomy 20, 25. Because you say you love Christ, right? You say you love Christ, right? You got to understand. This right here, remember I told you? This the brainwashed us. The lives brainwashed us that came with this image. Because the way we live right now is based off of this image and the lies that came with Christianity. So when Christ get, hey, when you come into the knowledge of the truth, you got to first do one thing. Before you get Deuteronomy 22 and 5, give me uh, Matthew 18 and 3. I'm going to show you what we got to do as we learn this truth. You understand? Hey, hey this is going to be quick. I want you to, because I, I don't want you to miss out on this. Watch this. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3. And said, Verily I say unto you, 
except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. He said, he said unless you be converted. I'm going to tell you, the laws are what converts you. If you was a thief, thou shalt not what? You, thou shalt not steal. You see how quickly the law can convert you? You know, if you was a whoremonger, thou shalt not commit what? Adultery. Right. You see how the laws can convert you that quick? He said, unless you be converted and become as little children. You see what these little kids are doing right now? They listening and learning. Right. Our people sit there and be like, I'm already saved by the blood of Jesus. You can't tell them nothing. They already know. I know I'm good, bro. I'm good. That's what our people do. And yet, they're going to die because they they too proud. Say, pride come before what? Destruction. And so we, the Bible's telling us we got to humble ourselves like little children and come ready to learn and suck up that wisdom and that knowledge that God's feeding you right now. Now, here's the law. That for you women, I pray that you change and come out of that sin that you're in. Because this sin is going to get your daughters put to death and you put to death if you don't change. Because, you know, one lie that's been taught to us that God ain't going to kill the babies. You know what I'm saying? We was taught that, like, God's going to save the baby's lives when he come back. No. It, well, you know what I'm saying? Like, daughter like who? Mother. If the mother wicked, God's saying the daughter wicked too. He's putting them to death too. That's why he said he told you to do what? Teach your children. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. He said a woman shouldn't wear which pertain to men. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. He said all that do so are abomination to the Lord thy God. Now that's talking about what? Cross dress. It said a man shouldn't wear women's clothes. What would be considered a woman's clothes that a man shouldn't wear? Dresses, right? He said a woman shouldn't wear that which pertains to a man. What would that be? Pants and shorts. Yeah, yeah, specifically talking about pants and shorts. And he said that's an abomination. Can you get into the kingdom committing an abomination? No. You know what else is a poor abomination? There's certain foods that we eat are abomination. Give me that in Leviticus 11 and 7. There's certain foods that we eat. So we got to come out of those pants. You understand? Because you know what happens by us, uh, our women wearing pants? What happens when a man wears a dress? He takes on a feminine spirit. Think about this right here. Our people, our women now, been wearing pants uh, for the last, what, about 30, 40 years? 50 years, maybe? Yeah, yeah it was about 60, 70 years. Yeah, it's about 70 years now. Our women been wearing pants for about the last 70 years. That's a new thing on earth. And now, they make a song saying, I don't need no man. I, I don't need no scrubs. Now, nobody say that but our people. You don't hear the white woman saying she don't need no man. You don't see the white woman sitting there bucking up trying to fight a man. You got women be out here fighting men in the streets. They done took on a masculine uh, spirit. Right. Now there's so much uh, homosexuality among our women because of those pants and that spirit that becomes behind that sin. That's why we got to teach our children right. You understand? That makes sense? Watch this. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. You know what the swine is? The pig, read. He is unclean to you. It is what? Unclean to you. It's unclean. That's another abomination. The swine. So we can't eat pork. You understand? That's why we end up with high blood pressure, gout, all these things. Because why? We broke that law. Think about that. We've been the number one for high blood pressure. We're the number one in diabetes. Every disease, you name it, guess who's number one in it? For breaking God's law. Because they weren't giving God's laws. We were giving God's laws. Give me Amos 3. We was giving God's laws. So guess what has to happen for breaking God's law? 
punishment. Right. He ain't gonna punish everybody else. He don't care about them. They gonna get their judgment. You don't know what the judgment is when he's poor. Read it again. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. They are unclean. So let's get the judgment for that. Give me Isaiah 60, was it 65, 66, 17? 66 and 17. So let's get the judgment for eating swine. Because you know what our people say? God ain't going to judge me for how I dress. God ain't going to judge me for what I eat. But yet we dropping dead at 45. You understand? We was meant to live to 120. Now, now we got people dying in the 30s and 40s from high blood pressure, having strokes because they don't eat pork their whole life. They don't eat shrimp. They don't eat crab. They don't eat lobster. Watch this. Here's the judgment, bro. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. Eating what? Swine's flesh. And the abomination and the mouths shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. They're going to be put to death. You understand? Stop. Sorry, how my fact, jump up. Yeah, jump up 15. Verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. He's going to come with what? Fire. The Lord is coming with fire. You know, it's prophesied that America will be destroyed by fire. What can destroy America with fire? Nuclear destruction. It said one day, one hour. Watch this. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. With his chariots. That's Christ coming back with his angels to pass judgment on what? On God's enemies for what they've done to his children. Read. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. With what? Flames of fire. Read. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. I mean, he's going to put them to death. Read. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. It's going to be what? And the slain of the Lord shall be many. It's going to be many because they love that pork chop. Right. They love that ham. They love that bacon. They love that sausage. They love them crabs, them shrimps, them lobsters. Hell, they love the white woman. Bring it out. They love wearing their pants. They all going to get put to death. Right. Read. Right. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves and the garden behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together. They all getting put to death. That's the judgment, bro. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's Nation Time. Oh, you know what?